Our scripture this morning comes from John chapter 1, verses uh, 29 through 42. The next day, he saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which translated to Peter. Throughout our journeys of faith, we have always been told to be followers of Jesus, to do as Jesus did, to be like Jesus was. But I think we miss something by doing that, because maybe we need to be more like John. Maybe we need to be more like the baptizer, because it was John who was with his disciples and when he saw Jesus, he told his very own disciples, he's the one you should be following, not me. He was willing to give up his place of prestige with his disciples and hand it over to Jesus. And then his disciples followed Jesus. John showed the way to Jesus. We struggle in the church. We've struggled for years. So much I hear like, oh, I just wish it went back the way it was before the pandemic. Oh, okay, we could go back to the way it was before the pandemic when our churches were declining and in trouble. <laughs> That's what we want to go back to? Do we remember what it was really like back then? Two years ago, three years ago? And we wonder why our pews are emptier. We wonder why our Sunday school is smaller. We wonder why things aren't the way they were when we were growing up. Well, nothing's the way it was when I was growing up. I don't know about the rest of you. I mean, when I was growing up, there was nothing on Sundays but church, so that's what you did, right? It wasn't really a choice. There was just nothing else to do. It is true, you know. When I was growing up, did we do stuff in youth group? Actually, no. We didn't have a youth group when I was growing up. We had a bell choir. That's what we did because we couldn't get the kids to come to youth group but we could get kids to play in the bell choir. 
I, I don't know why, it's just the way it was. <laughs> but when those, those churches that did have youth groups that met probably on Sunday nights, because there was nothing else to do on a Sunday night, or maybe we had confirmation on Wednesday night, because there was nothing else to do on a Wednesday night. It was church night, but it's not anymore. Society has changed, and we have not been willing to change with it. And we think just because we hold it, they will come. Just because we build it, they will come. It was a movie. It's not really a thing. <laughs> only in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> the only, yeah, it worked in Iowa, okay? What does that say? But when is the last time we were actually like John and did the inviting and the pointing of the way? When is the last time we were amongst friends and we talked about our church in a way that was exciting and inviting? When is the last time that we were the ones who said, you know, you should come, you should join us because we have a good time. You should come because we find it, I find it meaningful. You should come because you fill in the blank. But I know the reality is, and I'm not pointing any fingers here, I'm just saying my experience when I'm out in public with people from other churches, all they do is complain about their church. And the way they talk about their church, I would never want to go there. And the thing is, they're searching for a pastor, and they're like two miles from my house, and I won't step foot in there because of the way they talk about their church. I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to put up with that. And they wonder why there's 10 people in the pews. Well, I can kind of tell you why. Because <laughs> the way you're talking right now, I don't want to sit in your pew. John encountered Jesus and he got excited. He got inspired. He saw something that he was looking for and he found it. And he didn't walk away and say, wow, that was kind of cool, and leave it at that. No, he told his disciples about Jesus. And when he saw Jesus again in the presence of his disciples, he said, there he is, that's the one. That's the one you should follow, not me. That's, he's the one. He is, I saw it with my own eyes. He is the anointed one. And he was excited about it. And he shared it. And they went and they followed him. What did Simon do? He went and got his brother first before he followed him. Hey, you got to come with me. We found it. Come on, join me. And they were excited enough that people followed along and went with him. It's okay to try to be like Jesus. But maybe we need to be more like John. Maybe we need to be the ones who are excited about what's going on in our faith community and share it in a way that others would want to be part of it. Maybe we need to get excited. Maybe we need to stop being so stoic. I'm, you know, where I come from, we're all German, we're pretty stoic. But maybe we need to get a fire lit underneath us that inspires us to go out and say, come, come with me, follow me to the place where you can be inspired and nurtured and loved. Come with me and discover, discover what I've discovered in the Christ. Maybe, maybe that's why our churches are struggling because we're not excited enough about what we're doing and who we are for others to want to join with us. Maybe. Maybe the culture has changed. Well, it has. <laughs> the culture has changed. Maybe we need to change with it and find new ways of being who we are and doing what we do that leaves space for others to come and join us. 
it's not the way we've always done things. Because nothing is the way we've always done things. And those are the seven last words of the church. We've never done it that way before. <laughs> oh well, you know what I mean. <laughs> And that will be the end of the church if we can't somehow change and adapt to our society as it is. We can crank about it all we want, but that's not going to make a difference. I've always said, I know if I do absolutely nothing, nothing will change. I know if I try to do something, something might change. Maybe not, but there's hope. But doing nothing results in nothingness. John was willing to give up his place with his disciples because he saw something in the Christ. And he was so excited he wanted to share it, and he wanted them to follow Jesus and not himself. That's kind of major. That's big. So what do we need to give up within ourselves so that others might want to come and follow? Think about that.